everyone, and welcome. You're watching Eagle News America. I'm Alan Basoyahe coming to you from Los Angeles, California. It's Thursday evening here, the fifth day of August 2021. Joining us live tonight in Las Vegas, Nevada, Daryl Joy Evangelista. Las Vegas local officials weigh options to keep city open amid COVID cases surge. In California, prorogation in North Hills. COVID-19 cases spike among healthcare workers in LA County. Marianne Borja in Van Nuys. Eligible Los Angeles Community College students to receive grant funding for DACA applications and renewals. For Environment News, Rafaela Tigno in Panorama City. Los Angeles hosts a free bulky item drop-off event in several locations. For entertainment news, Emerson Simon in Silmar, California. New film Respect details the life and career of Aretha Franklin. For EBC Travel, Tristan Diaz in Bakersfield. Disneyland offers its new Magic Key Pass program. For today's weather, EBC friend Gabrielle Sukulis joins us this evening. What weather to expect in the coming days here in Los Angeles? For business news, Carlo Valdez in Union Township reports about Amazon Global Air landing at Newark Airport and bringing 1,000 jobs. Let's talk about some back to school blues. Our coverage begins now. We turn first to today's COVID-19 numbers. According to the Coronavirus Resource Center of Johns Hopkins University and Medicine, as of 6 p.m. Eastern Time, Thursday, August 5, 2021, the number of cases of COVID-19 reported worldwide is now over 200,702,000. Top three on the list of countries with recorded cases are the U.S. at more than 35.4 million, India at more than 31.8 million, and Brazil at more than 20 million. This virus has now claimed more than 4,263,000 lives worldwide. Top three countries with the most number of COVID-19 related deaths are the US with over 615,000, Brazil with over 559,000, India with over 426,000. Total vaccine doses administered worldwide are now at 4,304,508,000, 417. In Las Vegas, Nevada, city officials are thinking of options on how to keep the city open despite a surge in COVID cases. Eagle News correspondent Daryl Joy Evangelista joins us tonight. Nevada's new daily COVID cases nearly tripled in the last month. The state's test positivity rate in, is 15.5% Clark County, where Las Vegas sits, has 83% of the new daily cases with a test positivity rate of 16.5% as of Wednesday. 10 out of 17 counties in the state are now flagged for having elevated risk of transmission. Seven out of eight new daily death count for Nevada were from Clark County, Nevada ranks fourth in the count in the country with 2.4 deaths per capita behind Virgin Islands, Louisiana, and Arkansas, according to CDC. Due to these numbers, hospitalization metrics continue to climb, mostly in southern Nevada. It has more than doubled since the beginning of July. Currently, there are 1,206 confirmed hospitalizations with COVID cases in the state. 1,100 or 92% of the total numbers is from Southern Nevada. Although five hospitals are reporting a, a staffing shortage, no hospitals are reporting any shortage of medical supplies, including PPE, ventilators, or medications. About 95% 95% of the, those hospitalized are unvaccinated, according to Nevada Hospital Association. Vaccination remains to be best mitigation measures, says NHA. 
And that's exactly what Commissioner Tick Segerblom said Tuesday during the Clark County Commissioner meeting. He said, we can talk about masking all we want, but the answer is that vaccination is the best way to keep the surge fueled by the Delta variant. Members of the committee discussed options on how to, how to turn these numbers around because closing down the city is not an option as stated by Commissioner James Gibson. Commissioner Michael Naft added that they are getting calls from Fortune 500 companies and the top 10 trade shows that come to town asking what the government is doing to mitigate the spread of the coronavirus. Some public comments include that the mandating mask again will drive away businesses, but according to Naft, these convention leaders are not asking for laxer rules. Instead, they're asking how safe will their employees be working alongside Las Vegas employees when they come for the con conventions. Gibson said that Las, Las Vegas will not remain open if it loses big conventions again. One option the commission, the commission agrees to push forward is to require unvaccinated Clark County employees to provide proof of an FDA approved negative PCR COVID test once or twice a week with the goal to encourage more vaccinations. The county manager, Yolanda King, is tasked to provide guidelines for part-time employees considering the added financial burden for them to meet this requirement should it go into effect. The anticipated, they anticipate an effect date of September 1st, 2021 and may vote on the item in at their August 17 meeting, meeting in Las Vegas, DJ Evangelista, Eagle News, we live in interesting times. Back to you, Ellen. Uh, DJ, what other options do they have on the table to increase this uh, the vaccination rate? County Manager King mentioned mandating vaccinations, but due to some legal concerns, they couldn't consider it. Commissioner. Sigur Blom talked about giving incentives like paying each person $100 to get vaccinated, but it's tougher to make that happen because they have to prioritize other projects. They mentioned other organizations have tried that approach, but it didn't turn out to be effective. They looked at the survey by the Kaiser Family Foundation as reported by the NYT on what would make people with vaccine hesitancy consider getting vaccinated and the FDA giving full approval of the vaccines are currently in use now tops the list. I know DJ we're going to talk a little bit later about back to school blues but before we get to that I want to throw out a hypothetical for you okay and the other thing I'm going to throw out is higher education we're not including college if we're just going to pick either elementary middle or or high school jump into your time machine, which of these three stages of education would you go and relive? Elementary school. Excellent. Was it because it was more fun or, or what's the deal with elementary? It was more fun. We had more time at recess. <laughs> we all need time to play. If I could jump into time machine uh, before the pandemic, I would have invested in pharmaceuticals. DJ, thank you for your report. In Los Angeles, the number of COVID cases is rising among healthcare workers. To tell us more, we have with us live Eagle News correspondent Pearl Rogashon. Thank you, Alan. As COVID-19 remains to be highly susceptible in Los Angeles County due to the Delta variant, cases are also beginning to rise among healthcare workers. In previous months, there, there have been less than 50 new COVID-19 positive cases weekly for healthcare workers. This number has risen in the past several weeks. From July 12 to July 17, there were 295 COVID-19 positive cases reported for the week among healthcare workers. And from July 19 to July 24, there were 275 COVID-19 positive cases reported for the week among healthcare workers. A total of 42,296 healthcare workers, including first responders in Los Angeles County, had a positive COVID-19 test since the onset of the pandemic. According to the public health statistics recorded as of about two months ago, 
68% of county healthcare workers have been fully vaccinated. At this time also, about 85% of skilled nursing facility employees have received the required vaccine doses to be fully vaccinated. These vaccination records among healthcare workers are considered high and have resulted in protection against COVID-19, keeping deaths among this group from increasing. Currently, 276 healthcare workers have died from COVID-19, with most taking place from July 2020 to February 2021, when vaccination was not as widespread. In comparison, only two healthcare workers have died from COVID-19 since the latter part of May. Barbara Ferrer, LA's public health director, says healthcare workers in particular should be fully vaccinated to ensure that those needing care have reduced chances of an exposure. The vaccines continue to be a powerful tool against COVID-19. In North Hills, California, Pearl Vagashon, Eagle News, we live in interesting times. Back to you, Alan. Uh, Pearl, how is the uh, test positivity rate and the overall COVID-19 situation now here in Los Angeles County? Alan, as of yesterday's daily numbers, there were 3,734 positive cases and 60 new deaths with 1,242 hospitalizations due to COVID-19 and 22% of them are in the intensive care unit. The test positivity rate is now at 6%. Out of the 7,381,000 Angelinos that have tested for COVID-19, about 17% tested positive. The good news out of all these numbers are that even though cases and hospitalizations are increasing, the number of COVID-19 deaths remain low and controlled. As uh, a result of more than half of the Los Angeles County population being fully vaccinated. Alan. Well, we'll certainly take whatever good news we, we can possibly get. Pearl, before we let you go, of course, we're going to be talking about going back to school blues. You have two young boys yourself, three if we count your husband. But what have your two young sons told you about the upcoming fall semester? Are they looking forward to it? Do they want more, more vacation time? Okay, share with us. Actually, they are looking forward to it. They are actually excited to see their friends, their classmates, and um, yeah, um, it's a positive so far, positive so far. I'm sure they can't wait to see each other face to face and talk about all of the things they did while they were away from each other. Thank you, Pearl, for your report. Thank you, Alan. Los Angeles Community College students applying or renewing their applications for the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, or DACA, may soon avail of a grant that pays for all the corresponding fees. To tell us more, we have Eagle News correspondent Mary Ann Borja. Thanks, Alan. City of Los Angeles launches a grant funding program for eligible community college students on the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, or DACA, application process. 500 students attending one of the LACCD will be awarded $495 for their DACA application fee. This, however, is a one-time grant for qualified enrollees of LACCD and will pay both the initial and renewal DACA application fees. This does not need to be paid back. It will give a great opportunity to many community college students who came to the United States when they were young to continue to submit applications to remain in Los Angeles without having to worry about these financial obligations. Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti says the decision to erode the DACA program was heartbreaking, but Los Angeles will always stand up for its streamers. He says DACA has given so many hardworking, ambitious young Angelinos an opportunity to pursue higher education and contribute to the city which in turn will support them in staying here in Los Angeles where they belong. The program also aims to have young residents complete and turn in their applications at the soonest time possible. Although a ruling by the U.S. District Court in Texas halted the processing and granting of initial DACA applications, DACA students can continue to complete, submit, and file their initial applications. 
current DACA recipients can also still turn in their renewal requests and advance parole to travel in and out of the county. Steve Perez, LACCD board president, urges students to stay focused on their educational goals. He says the fight for justice and democracy continues, and LACCD is all in. In Van Nuys, California, Marianne Borja, Eagle News, we live in interesting times. Back to you, Alan. I'm Marianne, you know, LA, we're known for supporting the young, their pursuits for higher education, and of course, a brighter future for themselves and their families. But besides being a student of the Los Angeles Community College District, are there any other requirements to receive this grant funding for their DACA application fees? Yes, Alan, Los Angeles is a great melting pot of various ethnicities and family backgrounds. So the city supports every individual and family contributing to the strong pillars of the city. There are three basic requirements to be eligible for this grant program. First, the student needs to be enrolled in an LACCD college. There are nine colleges throughout Los Angeles, which are Mission, Pierce Valley City, East, West, Trade Technical, Southwest, and Harbor. Second, the student needs to show financial need. And third, the student has to attend scheduled virtual workshop sessions that details more about this program as well as immigration information. Those who are selected to receive this grant will also be able to obtain free legal representation from the Central American Resource Center and Coalition of Humane Immigration Rights to help them in completing and submitting their DACA application. Alan? Around these parts, we do know that the LACCD or the Los Angeles Community College District is actually quite large. And there are actually a lot more colleges than the ones that you mentioned. But because we're gonna be talking about back to school blues uh, and, and because DJ Evangelista already picked elementary school, we're just gonna go ahead and pick for you before we let you go. High school, Marianne, were there any clubs or any team sports that you were a part of that you really very much liked or maybe you want to join and uh, well, just, go ahead and tell you if it's interesting enough, I'll share with you a uh, club of sorts that I was part of that, uh, that you may not have expected. What do you have for us, Marianne? Well, I did try the sports thing, but it didn't really work out for me. So I did try a lot of um, student council and a lot of student government. You seem like the kind of person who would excel in student council and student government. Well, I don't know. You know. I suppose we can share with you. Uh, you, you know that uh, there's a show, was a show quite popular for a while called Glee. Yep. Right. I that's that's the club. That's the club that I was in. I was in show choir. Keep that to yourself, as if nobody else has listened into our conversation. And Marianne, we'll talk to you a little bit later about your back to school blues. But thank you very much for the report. All right. Thanks, Alan. Coming up, entertainment, and. Environment News. Eagle News America continues. Hindi makukompleto ang kada umaga ng walang mainit at masarap na kape. Subalit ngayong may ECQ karamihan sa mga nasa establishmento na ating iniinuman ng masarap na kape ay sarado rin. MSMEs again are affected by the lockdowns, small businesses should continue learning new strategies including keeping up with the digitalization to survive the pandemic. In this episode, we will be given tips on how to remain persistent amidst the trials and challenges we, including our businesses, face. With our guest, Mr. Eric Lim, the COO of Conlin's Coffee. You have to find the right partners. Part of finding your partners is the same thing what your customers are looking for. Consistency, reliability, and quality. All these this episode of Open for Business. Hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Sa ilalim ng dagat ay sisisig. Ang tahong ay hahanguin. At ang kita ay palalaguin. Para ka kumita, Eh, sisipagan mo, tapos konting kapitalo, magpopondo ka para meron kang hanguin o meron kang makuha pagdating ng oras. Mga six months, three months, pabalik na yung puhunan mo. Kesa sa itapon, no? 
kailangan natin siyang i-recycle para mapakinabangan. Iba't ibang sangkap ay lutuin. Putahing di kayang ibukin. Ako po si Robin Padilla at ito po ang Ulblad. Kaagapay sa hanap buhay. You're watching Eagle News America. I'm Alan Basoyahe in Los Angeles. Trying to get rid of an old mattress, a bookshelf, or maybe even an outdated garden table? Well, here's your chance to finally clear out your garage or that spare room. Rafaela Tigno has the details. Thank you, Alan. The Los Angeles Sanitation and Environment, or LA San, announces its next monthly free bulky item drop-off event next Saturday, August 14. It will be from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. at five locations in the city. East Valley District Yard in San Valley, West Valley District Yard in Northridge, Harbor District Yard in San Pedro, West LA District Yard in Los Angeles, and the Central LA Recycling and Transfer Station in Los Angeles. Before tossing away their bulky items, res residents are urged to donate them to thrift stores or other charitable organizations. But if not accepted, these items may be brought to the upcoming free bulky item drop-off event. Now, what do you do if you cannot haul these bulky items to the drop-off locations? You can contact the city's Customer Care Center at 1-800-773-2489 or through the MyLA311 app to request a free, yes, no-cost curbside pickup. If you are opting to call, prepare a list of all the bulky items that will be up because the representative will ask you for one. There's an option of filing out and turning in the bulky item collection service request form online on their website. You might be wondering what are the acceptable bulky items. The list include couches, mattresses, tables, bookcases, and carpets. Take note, the department will accept any will not accept any house, household hazardous electronic construction and medical waste, including batteries, kitchen, uh, or office appliances, dirt soil, and dead animals. Better not bring any of these prohibited items as you may be fined. In Panorama City, California, Rafael Tigno, Eagle News. We live in interesting times. Back to you, Alan. Okay, Rafael, so we understand no no dead animals, but are there any other restrictions or requirements that Los Angeles uh, residents need to be informed of when they drop off their unwanted bulky items next Saturday at one of these five locations that you mentioned? Actually, yes, Alan. Residents can only make one visit or one trip to any of these locations during this free bulky item, item drop-off event, so they need to pack everything up in one truck load. There is a limit weight of two tons per vehicle or nothing bigger than a flat stake bed truck. And everyone delivering and dropping off must show proof of Los Angeles residency by a Los Angeles Department of Water and Power Bill and a state-issued driver's license or identification card. This is a city-held event, so the participating public should give correct and punctual information. Alan? You know, Rafaela, maybe one of the back-to-school blues that some students would cite is having to do all-nighters. We've all done all-nighters, right? We stayed up for hours and hours cramming, studying for an upcoming test, or maybe working on a project the next day. My question to you is, whenever you had to do an all-nighter, what did you like to eat? What did you like to drink to go with you as you studied for a lot of hours? I usually go to pizza, yeah. See, you know, I've heard that the greasier the pizza, the better you'll stay awake, or, <laughs> or it's opposite. It's one of the two, I can't remember. Okay, great. So we'll pull an all-nighter, 
pizza is the way to go. Rafaela, thanks a lot. We'll talk to you in a little bit. Here we are for entertainment news. Emerson Simon tells us what movie to anticipate in the coming week. Emerson. Thank you, Alan. America in the 1960s is often recognized as a period where rock and roll and soul music flourished and where many performers started promising careers. Aretha Franklin or the Queen of Soul is no exception and the unique story of her rise to fame will finally be told in the new bio biopic film, Respect which stars our influential R&B singer and Grammy winner Jennifer Hudson as Miss Franklin. Respect will open with Aretha's humble beginnings as a singer, where uh, at a young age, her powerful voice had already shown promise. It will detail how her father, C.L. Franklin, the man with a million dollar voice, along with other family, inspired her to create her own music. Being a national beloved singer does not happen overnight as Respect will detail how Miss Franklin's journey from her neighborhood to the big stage was not an easy one. The film also tells of Miss Franklin's integral role as a, figure, as a figure in the civil rights movement of the 1960s, where her voice and music uplifted inspired those fighting for a social change. Respect will be released in theaters on August 13th in Summer, California, Emerson Simon. Eagle News, we live in interesting times. Back to Ellen. Uh, so Emerson, how can one who may have never heard of Aretha Franklin, which I, I suppose there are individuals like that who've never heard of her, well, how can they be, con be convinced to see this movie? Alan, even if someone has never listened to Aretha Franklin's song, at some point in their lives, they're most likely have followed an artist or listened to a song that has the Queen of Souls influence on it. Several artists of our generation, such as Beyonce, Christina Aguilera, Alicia Keys, and others, consider Miss Franklin as one of the biggest musical influences. In addition to Miss Franklin's remarkable story, has never been portrayed on a big screen. So for those who love the music genre she left a legacy for, it should definitely be esteemed as a must-see event. Alan. Uh, R-E-S-P-E-C-T, that's respect that we give even to teachers and educators, because after all, Emerson, we are talking about back-to-school blues. And before we let you go, we want to ask you, do you still remember the name? And if so, if you, can you give us the name of any of your teachers, any of your educators that left an imprint on you? What was their name? Mrs. Smith. Can you tell us what was so special about Mrs. Smith? Um, she was actually my fourth grade teacher, I remember, and she has usually the wackiest hair color, so it, it's left a really big, uh, <laughs> personal differentiation on her, and then, you now it kind of inspired me somewhat. <laughs> uh, Emerson, I can totally identify because the teacher that I always remember by name is also an elementary school teacher. Actually, I'm going to... Uh, changed that. It was my kindergarten teacher, Mrs. McKenzie. And the reason why I always remember her was because when I was five years old, I was convinced that when I grew up, I was going to marry Mrs. McKenzie. I wonder what she's up to these days. But in any case, Emerson, thank you very much for your report. We'll talk to you in a little bit. Thank you, Alan. When we come back, EBC Travel and Weather Update. Eagle News America will be right back. Stay with us. Aquino here at Hatley Castle, one of the filming locations for the X-Men series. Don't forget to tune in to Digital Nest only on Net25. Factual. We have to defeat the virus everywhere. Timely information. Balanced. Not only in the country, but also abroad. I'm certain of one thing. Interviews that people need to know. Watch Aguila Pilipinas, a one-hour newscast of reports coming from regional hubs in Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. 
know the important updates in Asia in ASEAN in Focus. Track the latest stories in the provinces in Aguila Provincia. Tune into Mata ng Aguila, the evening primetime news program of Net25. Balanced and objective, Mata ng Aguila covers national and international issues, tackles news on business, health, science, and technology, entertainment, sports and human interest features, and current events. And Eagle News International delivers the latest global reports, impartial, accessible, and up-to-date. It brings to four EBC's rich international scope and access to valuable information streams. Well, thank you to our help outdoor Catch these programs on Net25. You can also watch our news programs through eaglenews.ph and Eagle News Facebook page and YouTube channel. Eagle News correspondent Tristan Diaz fills us in on Disneyland's newest pass program, Magic Key. Thank you, Alan. The moment that every Disney pass holder has been waiting for is finally here. Disneyland Resort Theme Park announces its Magic Key program. The resort calls it a guest-centric offering that will deliver choice, flexibility, and value for park admission, special access to unique experiences, valuable saving opportunities, and so much more. After the sunsetting of the previous Disneyland annual pass program, many Disney, uh, Disney lovers were left sad and no longer, no longer having park perks and flexibility with entering the theme park. This new program returns the magic offering four magic key pass options for families and guests to choose from. Dream Key, Believe Key, Enchant Key, and Imagine Key. Starting in August 25, the Magic Key program will be available for purchase with the opportunity to visit the park the same day with reservations. California residents will be exclusively offered monthly payment plan options with starting as low as $19 per month for 12 months. Now visit Disneyland.com slash Magic Key for more details. In Bakersfield, California, Tristan Diaz, Eagle News, we live in interesting times. Back to you, Alan. Oh, Tristan, speaking of Disneyland, for myself personally, it's been quite a while since I've uh, been there. For yourself, what are you looking forward to writing when you visit uh, Disneyland again? Uh, writing? Um, <laughs> It, it's been a while for me as well, but I, I actually uh, go to the other park, which is uh, California Adventures, and I actually go to the, the the very big one. I forget what that one's called, but um, all the rides I, I ride on. <laughs> I, I believe that ride is called Motion Sickness Roller Coaster. It's, yes, <laughs> it's something yes. along those lines. This, this, all right. Dizziness, yes. <laughs> exactly. Disney, Disney, dizziness over there at California yes. Adventure. <laughs> Um, I myself actually suffer from major motion sickness, so you'll find me in the gift shops. Now, Tristan, we're, we're talking about uh, back-to-school blues, and I just want to have a better picture of you when you're in school, let's say in, in middle school, because it's a lot of teenage angst when you're in middle school. Would you classify yourself more as a class clown or a studious student? I was more of the in-between of those two. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I uh, and I was more of the uh, class clown, towards leaning towards the class clown, but um, I was also studious as well. Okay, you, you took you took kind of the the safe road there, and you know I think probably <laughs> most, if not every, California uh, graduation night, whether it's middle school or high school, at one point or another went to Disneyland. Tell me, Tristan, were any of your grad nights 
at at the Magic Kingdom? Actually, uh, it was not because I, I grew up in New York, uh, so uh, it's too far away from us to to go there, even in Disney World too. <laughs> Well, you'll just have to be envious of us here in Southern California. But speaking of Disneyland, because you did mention about this, this magic key, are there any other additional perks to signing up for this opportunity, especially if they do it right away? Yes, according to Anaheim's Disneyland Resort, those who will sign up for this program will be given a special program to welcome the, them as magic key holders for their first 66 days in celebration of the Disneyland's Resort's 66th year anniversary. This special welcome package will be composed of one of a kind items like a premium branded pin, celebratory button and magnet among many others. In addition, Magic Key holders will receive entry and an exclusive preview and experience to Starcade in Tomorrowland when they visit the theme park. They will enjoy char ch charging stations and have photo opportunities as well as many other benefits and surprises. Alan? That was Tristan Diaz, who we're very uh, happy to have stolen away from New York. Thank you, Tristan, for your report. Thank you. Planning a last minute getaway this weekend? Well, we think it's best to check the weather first. In West Hills, EBC friend Gabrielle Sikoulas tells us what to expect. Gabrielle. Thank you, Alan. Great news for Los Angeles County residents. It is much cooler today throughout major areas of Los Angeles County than yesterday when temperatures rose to high 90s and this cooling weather will remain until the beginning of next week. According to the National Weather Service, there is a marine layer strata gradually moving from the coast in Southern California while wildfire smoke is propelling north to Pacific Northwest in Northern California. There's also critical weather alert until tonight for possible fire conditions in mountains, deserts, and especially at the Southern regions of Santa Barbara County. This is due to the immensely dry climate with winds and hotter temperatures in these parts. Residents of Antelope Valley are advised to be extremely cautious, especially with any kinds of ignitions. Lancaster made a new record high yesterday when temperatures there rose to 109 degrees Fahrenheit, surpassing the old record of 108 that was made in 1966. The cities of Woodland Hills, Palmdale, and Sandburg almost reached their records too, but were off by one degree each. In West Hills, California, Gabriel Sekulis, Eagle News, we live in interesting times. Back to you at the studios, Alan. Uh, so, Gabrielle, there, there is a short critical fire weather alert until tonight. We, I believe that's what I heard you say. Are there any fires currently burning in Los Angeles County? Yes, Alan, there is one called the Antonio Fire that has been burning since early this week on Tuesday at the Angeles National Forest near Mount Baldy. At this time, the fire is 35% contained and is burning at 50 acres. With cooler temperatures coming in our way, Firefighters are hopeful to increase the, in the contaminant of this fire in the days to come. Alan? Well, Gabrielle, you know what else is uh, going to happen in the days to come? Students are going to go back to school. You being a student also, are you looking forward to going back to school or do you just want to enjoy summer vacation a bit longer? I want to enjoy summer vacation a bit longer. So have you actually had a, a chance to meet up with any of your school friends or has the pandemic also kept you from from meeting up with them? The pandemic has caused me not to meet up with them, but I'm excited to see them at school this Monday, actually. This Monday, that's just right around the corner. All right, let's talk a little bit outside of school. If you have a chance to, of course, if restrictions are, are a little bit, have eased up a bit, what would you like to do with your friends for fun? I think I'd like to hang out with them, definitely, and get to go out like we used to normally when the pandemic wasn't here around yet. There's also this something called this magic key in Disneyland that we just reported on, and maybe that your, you and your friends can hang out over there. Gabrielle, thanks for the report, and we'll talk to you a little bit later. Thank you, Alan. Coming up, business news, ABC food, and tonight's roundtable about back-to-school blues. Stay with us. Tropical Cyclone o Bagyo 
Ang bagyo ay isang uri ng lagay na panahon na nagdudulot ng malalakas at mabibilis na hangin at pagulan na maaaring maging sanhi ng matitinding pagbaha, daluyong ng dagat at paguho ng lupa. Narito ang mga dapat gawin bago dumating ang bagyo. Una, alamin ang balita ukol sa panahon at mga anunsyong pangkaligtasan. Alamin ang plano ng komunidad sa pagbibigay babala at paglikas. Suriin ang bahay at kumpunihin ang mga mahina at sirang bahagi. Ihanda ang gobag na naglalaman ng mga pangangailangan ng pamilya. Ilikas ang mga alagang hayop sa ligtas na lugar. Kapag inabisuhan ang kinauukulan, mabilis na lumikas sa itinakdang evacuation center. Narito naman ang mga dapat gawin habang may bagyo. Una, maging mahinaho, manatili sa loob ng bahay o evacuation center at makinig sa pinakabagong balita at taya ng panahon. Patayin ang main switch ng kuryente at valve ng tubig. Gumamit ng flashlight o emergency lamp, maging maingat sa paggamit ng kandila o gasera. Umiwas sa mga salaming bintana. Ito naman ang dapat gawin pagkatapos ng bagyo. Hintayin ang abiso ng kinauukulan na ligtas ng bumalik sa tahanan. Umiwas sa mga natumbang puno, nasirang gusali at linya ng kuryente. Huwag gumala upang hindi maabala ang mga emergency services. Siguraduhing walang basa o nakababad na outlet o kagamitan bago buksan ang linya ng kuryente. Itapon ang mga naipong tubig sa lata, paso at gulong upang hindi pamahayan ng lamo. Today's business news, we head to New Jersey, where a thousand new jobs await as Amazon Global Air lands in the state. In Union Township, Bureau Chief Carlo Valdez reports. Thanks. Amazon is landing in New Jersey, and more specifically to Newark Liberty International Airport. Port Authority of New York and New Jersey Commissioners approved a 20-year lease of two buildings on the north side of the airport as a regional air cargo hub. This air cargo facility is expected to bring 1,000 new jobs. According to a Port Authority news release, Amazon Global Air, the company's cargo airline, will spend $125 million to transform two vintage buildings at the airport into a state-of-the-art 250,000 square foot air cargo campus. It is expected to open during the first quarter of 2023. Governor Murphy said in the news release, with this new partnership, Newark will continue to be a global leader in logistics. This new e-commerce hub will provide needed revenue to the Port Authority while also bringing new jobs to our state. And as for coronavirus stats and numbers, New Jersey reports of 1,345 new positive PCR tests, pushing the total to 912,619. Sadly, New Jersey is reporting four new confirmed deaths, pushing the total to 23,910 lives lost. In Union Township, New Jersey, Carlo Valdez, Eagle News, we live in interesting times. Back to you in the studio. Now we head to the kitchen where EBC's Aika Era shares with us her recipe for, listen to this, pickle fries and bacon cream cheese dip.
those looked uh, mighty scrumptious. All right, August is National Back to School Month. And so after almost two years of virtual and hybrid education caused by the pandemic, in-person instruction is back in play. And we are gonna turn back uh, time and share back to school experiences. And we're gonna bring our Eagle News uh, team with us to talk about some of these experiences. What we wanna do is we wanna start off with asking what was a not so happy back to school experience? And while we wait for our correspondents to come back on screen, I'll start things off. Uh, we, DJ and I, we mentioned elementary school. I believe Emerson also, also mentioned elementary school. One of my worst, not so happy back to school experiences is because, you know, in between one grade to the other, in these formative years of elementary school, the one thing you look forward to is when you go uh, back to school after a summer break is to see not just all your friends, but all the new fashion all the new fashion that your friends are sporting. And of course, you wanna show off what you're wearing. Unfortunately for me, there was one grade in elementary school where not only did I show up to the next school year with the same pair of dirty white sneakers that they remembered from the year previous, I was actually called out on it because the same hole that was at the top of my, of my toe where my sock would stick out was still there. So unfortunately, there was no hiding it. That was That's my not so happy back to school experience being called out for wearing the same broken shoes from the year prior. All right, let's bring on our Eagle News team for today. And let's ask them, let's see here. You know, I'm just gonna start from the top, left to right, work my way down. DJ, talk to us, you're not so happy back to school experience. Oh man, my not so happy is kind of very sad because <laughs> uh, we moved to, we moved to Hawaii and I knew no English whatsoever. So my first back to school after we moved from the Philippines was hard. I didn't know any sort of English whatsoever. All I knew was, um, where's the bathroom? So every, every time my teacher would be like, are you okay? I'd be like, I'm okay. I was like, uh, what do you want to do? Bathroom. And so she would send me to the bathroom, but I didn't know what it was. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, I totally, you know, I feel for you, DJ, but that's also so cute. That is such a cute story. What's your name? Bathroom. No, it's, it probably didn't go that, that far. But hey, you speak perfectly well now. You must have done something right. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Couldn't agree with you more, though. One of the most important phrases to know is, where's the bathroom? How about you, That's Pearl? What I was told. Which, uh, well, no, I, I, I think it is. Pearl, what's your not-so-happy back-to-school memory? I've been trying to remember, but I think it was too long ago. That's why I <laughs> okay. cannot remember anything right now. But what I would remember is that um, we would always have um, new stuff. And that um, time when um, I think I was in elementary, um, it was me, it was I who was the only one that didn't have a new bag. But of course I was a kid then, so I would feel, I don't know, embarrassed or that I'm, I'm not like my friends who has new stuff, but as I grow or get mature thinking about it, it's it's something not to be <laughs> embarrassed about. But yeah, that's that's what I think. <laughs> that's what I remember. I don't know. I don't know about you, Pearl. I'm still traumatized over my hole in my shoe. Uh, didn't have new clothes experience, but I'm glad you got over. <laughs> You've got over it. That's probably the mature way to approach things. All right. So you and I kind of share the same experience. I want to move on to Marianne. What is a not so happy back to school experience for you? You know, my experience is a little bit similar to Pearl's. Um, I I remember buying a bag, actually, a new, a new backpack, and it was a rolling one. <laughs> and... Um, before school, I thought, oh, I'm going to be so cool. I'm going to be the kid with the rolling backpack. But then when I got to school, I was the kid with the rolling backpack. It wasn't very fun, you know, hearing the, the wheels 
every time you walk somewhere, it was just not a good experience because you just pretty much stick out everywhere you go. <laughs> Marianne, I think I, I know the, uh, the one student that came with a rolling backpack onto campus. Couldn't you have said, I just came back from my vacation from the, the Swiss Alps and, oh, I just came straight from the airport. You could have said something like that, but, you know, <laughs> okay, I understand. How about you, Rafaela? What's a not-so-happy back-to-school experience? My not-so-happy back-to-school experience probably would be last year. It's my senior year, of course, and I missed a lot of school programs. Definitely the, the prom or the homecoming, something like that. Right, those are certain, you know, there are experiences that because of this pandemic, it just, it really put such a big pause in the, in the entire school experience. Emerson, a not so happy back to school experience. Um, wow, that's a toughie. Actually, one of my, one of my, um, the memories that I'm not so fond of is during sixth grade, I believe I went to a new middle school. It was basically a new city that we went to and I didn't have any friends. So it really took months just to find uh, new friends. And, you know, uh, being a new kid is pretty hard. And it's, it's like, it's pretty a challenge. <laughs> For any of us who have been, you know, taken out of our uh, a city where we live, then planted into in, in a new school, new school, school system. It is it is very hard. I myself went through that. You only need one friend. You just got to start off first with that one friend, and after that, the gates are wide open. Next thing you know, we have plenty of friends. Like we know you 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 must have Emerson because you're quite a friendly individual. Tristan, not so happy back to school experience. Um, I, I kind of have a similar one with uh, with Emerson. Um going back to middle school where um, back in the, you know, uh, the years before that, you know, first grade to fifth grade, you have your class always with you every year. But then when you hit sixth to seventh grade back in New York, uh, you're, you're always looking into new faces and creating new friends. So that, that was one of the fears that I had and was not so happy, uh, kind of dreaded it. Because I knew that was going to happen, and it did happen. Uh, but yeah, it's it's just the new faces and making new friends, kind of that scare moment. <laughs> but yeah, right, right. But we like what we well, like what we established. New York can't have you back. You're here with us for the long haul. <laughs> to Gabrielle, I just wanted to give a heads up to the rest of the correspondents. After we're done with Gabrielle, we're going to do a quick lightning round, and what we want you to think of is your favorite sport that you played in school. It could have been during elementary, middle, high, or if you went to, to higher education, your favorite sport. So just think about that. We're going to go left to right, you know, top from bottom. So we'll start with DJ, Pearl, Marianne. So just think about that. And I know all of you are thinking, I hope Gabrielle takes a long time for her response. Gabrielle, talk to us. What's a not-so-happy back-to-school experience for you? I think a not-so-happy experience for me was during elementary and kindergarten. Um, it was recess, and we, I was playing with this little lock, like a lock house, and I had little stuffed toys inside of them, and you would, like, find a code to unlock it, and I was doing that. The bell ring, and I was playing with some other kid, I think, but they left me alone to put everything back, and it took so long for me to, like, put everything back in, and I didn't know. So then when I went back to class, I was, like, the only kid that was out there alone putting everything oh. back trying to fix everything. So then after that, uh, my teacher, she asked why I was late. I was like, oh, I was trying to fix the toy because nobody helped me put it back. And she gave me, like, there's stars, if you were good, and, like, red dots. And she gave me a red dot. And at the end of the day, uh, I cried to my mom saying, oh, I got a red dot because I was the last kid playing outside recess trying to clean up. Uh, well, Gabrielle, responsibility sometimes is a lonely, lonely road. But... You mentioned you were in kindergarten. You know what would have, would have made your kindergarten experience better? If you had Mrs. McKenzie, like I did. She, she was a lovely teacher. <laughs> but in any case, all right, Gabrielle, well, we're glad that you uh, went past that uh, uh, phase. Right now, what we want to do is a quick lightning round. Favorite sport. 
Okay, I'm going to start off first, then we're going to go to DJ. Ready? Be ready to unmute yourself. Here we go. Favorite sport, me. Dodgeball. DJ. Dodgeball. You took my... Bowling. Bowling. Bowling? Yeah. Bo bowling? Okay. And <laughs> Mar 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 Marianne. Track and field. Track and field. All right. Rafaela. Volleyball. Volleyball. Emerson. Table tennis. Table tennis. I'll challenge you one day. Tristan. Basketball. Basketball. Tristan is about seven foot five for those of viewers who haven't <laughs> seen him in person. Gabrielle, favorite sport? Flag football. Flag football. Okay. And before we wrap things up, I want to go back really quickly to Tristan. Give us just one really good, good memory that you have of school. Uh, one good memory that I had in school was actually a bad one. <laughs> uh, it was <Okay>. actually... <laughs> go, ahead, I, uh, uh, go, go ahead, Tristan. We have a few seconds. It's actually um, in my kindergarten days. Um, actually, it was my mom who would always do my projects, and I would get A's, and people would give me credit. <laughs> and, and I would say, hey, I did it. And yeah, <laughs> All right. Well, we'll we'll omit that part from our broadcast tonight. But you know what? Uh, for our Eagle News team, I want to tell you one of the best uh, parts of my education experiences that I had is every time that I get to report with a wonderful team like Eagle News, because from you, I learned quite a great deal. And that, everyone, is today's Eagle News America. Thank you for joining us. I'm Alan Basoyahe. We live in interesting times. Start up your weekday mornings with edutainment, news, and information. Kasama ang inyong paboritong Net 25 shows. Samahan ang inyong paboritong.